Welcome to our Christmas Eve recording. While we are disappointed that we could not meet in person again for yet another year, we feel that our decision has been a good one in order to keep folks safe. The significance of Christmas, the hope, peace, joy, and love are not diminished because we cannot be together, but are as real as ever and reach across physical space in order to unite us in the common spirit of love. The readings, carols, and music that follow span the ages, some ancient and some more contemporary, each with the ageless message the Christmas story tells of a wondrous birth that holds the key to life. We hope you will listen, sing along, and more importantly, be touched by the mystery and the wonder the peace and the joy, the love and the hope that has always been ours and remains ours to accept and to embrace. We hope you will enjoy this recording. Merry Christmas and God bless. to us. This is the time of light and replenished joy. 
the prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. The end of then jealous. Luke painted the nativity sky and repeated the heavenly song of the angels. Glory, peace on earth and goodwill. John declared that this great light is Christ, the word made flesh. This great light lives among us. By it we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. At Christ's nativity, we now rejoice. God, our life and light, thank you for coming this night to us. Thanks for touching all heaven and earth with your splendor. In every corner of the world, shine this night with your peace. In every corner of our hearts, shine this night with your grace. Amen. chapter 2 verses 1 through 7 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and this taxing was first made from Cyrenius the governor of Syria and all went to be taxed every one to his own city and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his exposed, exposed wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room for them in the inn. From town, the church bells spilled their midnight music, and the beasts listened, yet they lay in their stalls like stone. Oh, the heretics, not to remember Bethlehem, or the star as bright as the sun, or the child born on a bed of straw, to know only of the dissolving now. Still they drowsed on, citizens of the pure, the physical world, they loomed in the dark, powerful of body, peaceful of mind, innocent of history. Brothers, I whispered, it is Christmas, and you are no heretics but a miracle, immaculate still as when you were thundered forth on the morning of creation. As for Bethlehem, that blazing star still sailed in the dark, but only looked for me. Caught in its light, Listening again to its story, I curled against some sleepy beast who nuzzled my hair as though I were a child and warmed me the best it could all night.
Ballad of Christmas Eve by Joyce Kilmer. There was a gentle hostler, and blessed be his name. He opened up the stable the night Our Lady came. Our Lady and St. Joseph, he gave them food and bed, and Jesus Christ has given him a glory round his head. So let the gate swing open, however poor the yard, lest weary people visit you and find their passage barred. Unlatch the door at midnight, and let your lantern's glow shine out to guide the traveler's feet to you across the snow. There was a courteous hostler, he is in heaven tonight. He held Our Lady's bridle and helped her to alight. He spread clean straw before her, whereon she might lie down, and Jesus Christ has given him an everlasting crown. Unlock the door this evening, and let your gate swing wide. Let all who ask for shelter come speedily inside. What if your yard be narrow? What if your house be small? There is a guest is coming, we'll glorify it all. There was a joyous hostler who knelt on Christmas morn beside the radiant manger wherein his Lord was born. His heart was full of laughter, his soul was full of bliss when Jesus on his mother's lap gave him his hand to kiss. Unbar your heart this evening, and keep no stranger out. Take from your soul's great portal the barrier of doubt. To humble folk and weary, give hearty welcoming. Your breast shall be tomorrow the cradle of a king. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them.
for Christmas Eve by Godfrey Rust. This is a love story, if you can accept it, that God the Father looked down at his world, and the world was like a sleeping, fitful child, and the child was spoiled. Its nations called each other names and roamed the earth's playground like a gang of boys who chose sides, always brandishing their terrifying toys. The world thought it was fatherless and hunted restlessly for some new sign or token, as if Christmas had come and gone, its presents all unwrapped, already broken. And the Father God looked at his child and counted the cost of love's freedom. But he had a plan to step from out of time and into history and become a man. With eternity to find the spot he chose with the greatest care. One night, a workman stood in a barn with a group of animals watching the birth of God. While out on the hills, some of the shepherds were astonished as a sky full of angels appeared and then disappeared. And a few astrologers saw a change in the stars they'd been studying for years. And almost everyone else knew nothing. Caesar turned and settled in his luxurious bed. While in Bethlehem, the power and the glory bawled for milk in a shed. It was quite an entrance. The only son of God, homeless, illegitimate, a refugee, owning nothing but the world that he grew up in, had made himself quite empty. His birth itself was a kind of dying where he abdicated power, omniscience, was needy, hated, and misunderstood, and after the last violence, he was laid in the womb of a grave for the birth which Bethlehem merely anticipated and for which the blind, brave, barricaded, spoiled world waited. No sage or rustic came with gifts. Only some women, hopelessly brave, brought spices in the dark of morning to an empty grave. Two deaths, two births, the manger and the cross. The first brought hope, the second brought salvation out of his poverty, this child has made us rich beyond imagination. And on a winter evening in a suburban home, a father looks down at his sleeping child. The room is warm and brightly lit. Outside, the night is darkly wild. And the child that sleeps knows well that she is loved, and in her bones, knows how to disobey. And she will learn that none is innocent, that death takes away all. And the father looking at her peaceful face feels his own helplessness and counts the cost of the love between them in a spoiled world where all must end in loss but but for Bethlehem and Calvary. These births have brought an end to death. And the child in the manger is the Lord. We feed on our helpless hearts by faith. Now and forever. Child, if you would wake on this Christmas Eve, outside you'd find a star, not a street lamp. Listen, you can hear the angel's message in the wind. 
Keeping Christmas, Henry Van Dyke. It is a good thing to observe Christmas Day, the mere marking of time and seasons, when men agree to stop work and make merry together, is a wise and wholesome custom. It helps one to feel the supremacy of the common life over the individual life. It reminds man to set his own little watch, now and then, by the great clock of humanity, which runs on the sun's time. But there is a better thing than the observation of Christmas Day, and that is keeping Christmas. Are you willing to forget what you have done for other people? and to remember what other people have done for you, to ignore what the world owes you, and to think what are you owe the world, to put your rights in the background and your duties in the middle distance and your chances to do a little more than your duty in the foreground, to see that your fellow man are just as real as you are and try to look beyond their faces to the hearts hunger for joy, to own that probably the only good reason for your existence is not what you are going to get out of life, but what you are going to give to life, to close your book of complaints against the management of the universe and look around you for a place where you can sow a few seeds of happiness. Are you willing to do these things even for one day? then you can keep Christmas. Are you willing to stoop down and consider the needs and the desires of little children to remember the weaknesses and the loneliness of people who are growing old, to stop asking how much your friends love you and ask yourself whether you love them enough, to bear in mind the things that other people have to bear on their hearts, to try to understand what those who live in the same house with you really want without waiting for them to tell you. To trim your lamp so that it will give more light and less smoke and to carry it in front so that your shadow will fall behind you. To make a grave for your ugly thoughts and a garden for your kindly feelings with the gates open. Are you willing to do these things even for a day? then you can keep Christmas. Are you willing to believe that love is the strongest thing in the world, stronger than hate, stronger than evil, stronger than death, and that the blessed life which began in Bethlehem 1900 years ago is the image and brightness of the internal love? Then you can keep Christmas. And if you keep it for a day, why not always? but you can never keep it alone.
Amazing Peace, a Christmas poem written by Dr. Maya Angelou. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Floodwaters await us in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotecting villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves, what have we done to affront nature? We worry, God, are you there? Are you there, really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Enter this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor. Come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence, and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion to aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk until their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things, even hate which crouches breeding in dark corridors. In our joy, we hear a whisper. At first, it is too soft, then only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It is loud now. It is louder, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for. Not just the absence of war, but peace, true peace. A harmony of spirit, a comfort of courtesies, security for our beloved and their beloveds. We clap hands and welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We, Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim, say come, peace. Come and fill us and our world with your majesty. We, the Jew and the Janist, the Catholic and the Confucian, implore you to stay with us a while so we may learn by your shimmering light and how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a halting of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious advent of trust. We shout with glorious tongues at the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud. Peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves. And we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother. Peace, my sister. Peace, my soul. Our family wishes all of you, near and far, our church family, friends, neighbors, everywhere, a very Merry Christmas. You are close in our thoughts. Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
May the spirit of Christmas touch your hearts and remain with you throughout this year. Merry Christmas. <laughs>